Hello, this is G. Bonjour. We have our hats on today. We're rocking the fedoras. <laughs> and welcome to Behind the Mic Live, where I sit down with incredible coaches, public speakers, and entrepreneurs who are making big rock star moves in their business. Today, my rock star guest is Miranda Arnold. She is the spiritual cheerleader, the founder of the spiritual copywriter, and a world traveler. So please welcome to Behind the Mic Live, Miranda. How are you? I'm so good, G. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited our paths crossed so we could get here. We didn't really know it was going to come here, but it, it kind of everything is happening for everything a reason. Manifest. So. We're going to talk yes. about manifesting today. So who yeah. is Miranda? Mm, that's a good question. Can I be like completely honest on this show? <laughs> is be that honest. like what we're doing be here? Honest. Okay, yes. cool. Miranda is a meat suit that I'm wearing in this lifetime that my soul chose. So okay. it looks like this Okay. Um, in an amazing way. But um, yeah, it's just kind of how I look and the form that I took on in this lifetime. Um, but I would say she's like very multidimensional and mm -hmm. curious um, and questioning everything that we've been taught since we were young kind of awakening people along that journey as I yes. kind of go along that journey myself to have more self authority and to listen to your intuition. So I'm really mm -hmm. in this process of like experimenting in my life, whether that's in business or travel or whatever, and um, seeing what works well for me, F like only for me with me in mind. So that's kind of who I am. I'm just an explorer and an experimenter and a business owner. Yeah. So how, how did you find your voice? Mm. I would actually say with the help of amazing coaches. Okay. Yeah. I could have found my voice on my own. It just would have taken a lot longer. So with the help of amazing coaches who really kind of kept me in line and helped me see like mirror back to me things that I couldn't see on my own mm -hmm. um, and astrology, yes. looking at my birth chart totally yes. and being like, Oh, this is the thing that I'm supposed to talk about and the way that I'm supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And when I say supposed to, I just mean that the way that works best for me, because it's in my birth chart, it's like my natal promise to the world. Like that's what the cosmos promised me as my gifts okay. in this lifetime. So it's not something like you have to do it this way or everything's going to fail. It's just the way that works easier. And so you can look at your Mercury placement for that with how you communicate, how you write, mm -hmm. how you speak. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say, yeah, astrology, the help of coaches, and then just literally doing the experimenting and figuring out who the fuck I actually am. Right. Sorry, am I allowed to cuss? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. We're all adults here. We're all adults. Sorry. I'll try to reel it in, but I cuss like a sailor, so I will try. <laughs> <laughs> so you have so many amazing qualities, right? Thank you. You're very spiritual. You, you're connected to the universe, manifesting mm. everything. We're going to talk about that. What would you say is your number one rock star quality? Mm. Damn, there's so many. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> my number one, yeah. honestly, yeah. is going against the grain and doing living life the way I want to without listening to any outside noise. Nice. Yes. Yeah. That's my number one. And that's something I had to cultivate over time. That is not something that I was just came out of the womb born with. That is something I kind of stepped into actually more recently um, as I moved through my Saturn return, which is around the age of 28, 29, when you really come Saturn to figure return. out who okay. you actually are. Um, uh yeah, go for it. I'm learning more about astrology. I'm an extrovert Gemini. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what what uh, planet and all that. I know Mercury's in there because of communication. Yes. Yeah. So you're ruled by Mercury. Ruled by Mercury. Okay. Yeah. So if Gemini is your sun, which I'm okay. assuming it is, is that your sun sign that you're referring to? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. I think. Yeah. So. You know, when you're out and about, and someone's like, "What's your sign?" We're talking about sun signs. Okay. Yes. So. Yes, we have way more action going on in our birth chart than that. But the one that we talk about all the time is sun. Okay. But the three top important players are your sun, your moon, and what okay. we call your rising sign. Okay. 
So you are a Gemini sun. And when we're talking about rulership and ancient astrology, Gemini is traditionally traditionally ruled by Mercury. Okay. So, you know, tricksters, okay. puzzles, communication, <laughs> mental buzz, and that planet moves two times faster than any other planet. So you're thinking, speaking, figuring things out quickly. Always. Yes. Yeah. That was a is that right? Years, you're so like, like, yeah. Here's yeah. here's a problem, fix it, move on to the next one. I don't I don't mm -hmm. spend too much time on on one thing. It's just like, okay, what's yeah. what, what has to be taken care of and then let's move on. Yeah. yeah. Geminis are always have their um, attention in so many different little subjects too. And you can kind yes. of pick them up quick and then you move on to the next thing. Yes. Cause you're quick. Multiple bitted. projects going at the same yeah, time. Yeah. Totally. Always. Totally. Do you know your other signs G? Uh, I, I don't. Sandy's been asking me to do my chart. Yeah. And, you know, that, <laughs> yeah. But, You'll so, want to after this call. I bet you. <laughs> I know, I know. So we, we met through, uh, well, Sandy signed up to work with, uh, Helena Woods. Yeah. And she saw you present at one of the mm -hmm. meetings and then yeah. you guys had a call and you guys started working together on her website. And she was like, you've got to meet Miranda. She's incredible with taking what, how you feel and putting it into, into words. And then we started working together on my website, G Wright yeah. coaching. And, um, I just, I knew immediately on the first call, this is what I want to talk about is how do you know, I want, I want everybody watching this show to understand how you know when you're right on the same frequency with other people you're talking about in business. And we mm. had this conversation off, off camera before. I want to continue yeah. that. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Are you kind of talking about like when I jump on a call with people like we have to determine if we're going to work together or just in general? In general, when, when you know, like this is like, I had this with the bands, I could just know even if they weren't mm. popular, even if nobody knew who mm -hmm. they were, I'm like, these guys are going to be huge. I just yeah. know if you're on the same frequency. Yeah. Well, you kind of said it yourself. It's a knowing. Yeah. It's an intuitive ping mm -hmm. that I feel, but it's also just the sensation you get mm -hmm. um, or the emotion you feel around somebody. Um, and if you're in touch with your body and you're kind of in touch with yourself at all, you can really feel that it's pretty obvious. Um and I would consider myself someone who is in touch with that and how other right. people's energy makes me feel, like how that influences me. Um, and so it's a feeling that you can sense right off the bat to me. It's just a knowing that's just there. Yep. Um, there and we talked about not. this. Yeah. It's just there. It's there yeah. or it's not. Yeah. And um, that's clairsentient. So, or clairsentient. So it's just okay. that knowing um, that you can't really always put words to and describe but also like if we're talking about um, we talked about astrology but I'm also into human design and in mm -hmm. human design a way to know that I'm doing the right thing or talking to the right person or headed in the right trajectory is mm -hmm. if something lights up my sacral chakra or makes me smile okay if it brings me that like lift and I'm excited okay. about it and that can be with people too on a connection mm -hmm. or whatever that looks like in business then I know that it's somebody that I meant to work with. If that sensation isn't there, it doesn't have to mean anything about that person. It's just right. me and them aren't vibing. And that is right. okay. Because right. we are never going to be for everybody, no matter what, ever. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I would say it's a knowing and it's a sensation. And it's, you know, if we're on a Zoom call, it's something that I can feel into relatively quick. Mm -hmm. um, like, maybe five minutes into a conversation and I can clearly be like, I don't want to move forward with that person and that's okay. Or, oh my God, this is a dream client. Like, yes, 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 yes. I love your energy. So that's how we felt about each other where it's, it's easy to, it doesn't yeah. require any forcing. There's no right. compromising on your boundaries. There's nothing kind of low frequency happening. It just feels right. And it happens really smoothly. Let's talk about that. What can entrepreneurs do to connect with their ideal clients without selling, without this mm. talking down to person or talking up to a person, or if you have the time, if you can afford it, yeah. like how do you connect yeah. with people without selling? Mm. People are going to hate this answer, but you just be your authentic self. Yes. That's exactly. literally it. 
Yes. And you have to know who that is and what that is. And of course, that's Mm -hmm. evolving all the time. But right now, the version of you, if you are speaking your truth in an aligned way from that version of you, Mm -hmm. in a way that lights you up, like that sacral, Yeah. yeah, I love talking about my offerings in this way. Your clients or customers, if you have a storefront, whatever that looks like, mm-hmm. are going to just magnetize you. And right. it's easy. There's no there's no hard selling. There's no struggling with your marketing and just like flooding all of this money into this kind of pain point marketing and pure right. pressure marketing where right. you're like, I have to make this arbitrary sale and it has to be this way or I am a failure. And it, it's just like this stressful, like I call it, you go out and you spearfish your client. It's very masculine where it's like, you're kind of stressed about making this amount of money and this amount of sales. And you don't really even see people as people when those people are investing in your services. You just see it right. as this financial goal. You just see right. it as money or a number. It's this arbitrary number. number in your yes. head mm-hmm. versus, you know, the more feminine way where I know who I am. I know what I have to offer. I'm talking about it in a way that's clear mm-hmm. and lights me up first as the business yes. owner it has to light you up first. If it doesn't light you up first, it's not going to light up your people. So that makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Than like yes. going out and doing all this yeah. crazy research and trying to figure out what every single person on the internet needs to hear from you to make a sale. It's like yes. so much easier this way. And that's, we had talked about this a little bit, G, but mm-hmm. that's where the new paradigm business is headed. It's much more yes. feminine than masculine. And that's not a gender. That's not like men versus women. That is not right. what I'm talking about here. This is um, energetics and we all have feminine and masculine in us. Mm-hmm. But which one is predominantly um, infusing into your business? Like, how does that look? And so with the feminine, it's magnetizing people to you, trusting that they're going to come and doing things that feel good for you first in your marketing, in your copywriting, however that looks, whatever your business is. And the masculine is kind of worried about it. And that really feeds into your marketing and copywriting because it's it's that pain point traditional marketing it's yes you better buy this or yes. else you have one day and you're never going to get it again which is oftentimes a lie and it's just it just feels icky <laughs> i i agree i think the masculine energy with sales has a, a feeling of lack 100 mm, percent yes whereas the feminine side of sales has a feeling of abundance yeah you nailed it. Totally. And yeah, you know, as a business owner and an entrepreneur, there definitely mm-hmm. will be times where you're like, I need to make more money and there's nothing innately wrong with needing to make or right. wanting, desiring more money. Right. But it's really about the frequency that you're desiring and manifesting it from. So to me, the old traditional way that we've been in up until this point, that's worked up until this point that's kind of falling at the wayside is not the way that that influences people to make buying decisions anymore. It's really that I know that this is for my highest good and Mm -hmm. this offer fell into my lap and I'm going to get this. And this is that effortless kind of feminine flow. But that when you do your selling and your writing and your marketing from that point, Yes. And you don't, you're not in that lack mentality. That's really when things flow. So it's a lot of like mental work. It's like, okay, do you have a coach helping you with your mental stories that you're moving through? Like, are you noticing what comes up every time you want to make a sale? But I will say we're like one foot in the masculine paradigm that we've been up to, been in up to this point. Okay. So it's still like, that's still part of our reality right now. So it's like, yeah, we're kind of in that. We're seeing that. We're seeing people talk about that on LinkedIn. Yep. You know, the marketing bro LinkedIn advice that just kind of gives us yep. all the PBGBs. <laughs> yes, yes. Us feel less than because we didn't make a million dollars overnight off of a $5 course. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then we have one foot in the feminine, which is super new. Mm-hmm. Never been done um, in humanity before. The planet has never been at this consciousness level before. Yeah. That we know of with you. Yeah. Yeah. So like 
Of course, it's so scary. We don't really trust it when we're listening to these conversations because we only know the masculine way, the traditional way, the pain point marketing that we've done up until this point. And that's what we've been taught is the right way and the way you have to do it in business. But it's changing. It's not that way anymore, which yep. is really exciting. And it's it's headed towards this new paradigm feminine way. Um, and I'm sure people listening to this have kind of already seen that where, and it's it's subtle things. So instead of saying like, you need to buy this thing now or you'll never right. get the to buy it again. Right, right. Um, here's this beautiful offer. I would love for you to join. You make yeah. it easy for them to join if they want, if they so choose, if it's yes. the right thing, and then you let it be because you trust, keyword trust, yes. that everybody that needs to come in for you to make this beautiful amount of money and to grow yep. your business and to grow your communities or whatever will come in by nature of you being in an abundant mindset. Yes. Yeah, it was it was cool. similar with the, with the artists <laughs> in, in the music business when they'd sit down. I don't think any artist sat down and said, "We're going to write a number one song. We're going to write yeah. a hit song that everybody knows." And there were several artists that tried to. I remember when uh, Nirvana was big, right? I mean, Nirvana just blew up, right? Every record label rushed to Seattle to sign any band that sound looked like had the T-shirt and jeans just like them and signed them. When Britney came out, when Madonna came out, doesn't matter who the artist was. They all tried to copy it and mm -hmm. put out as much as they could, you know, and then you've got an artist like Queen or mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, yeah. if you really want to go back to it, that stayed the same throughout their entire career and just said, I'm going to write this song for myself because yes. this is how I'm feeling. What I want to mm. talk about, and this is a talent that you have. This is what I think is, in my opinion, your number one rock star quality is you're able to connect with people and put it into words mm. of how they feel. Like we did with my about page and yeah. more on the website is like, how, how do you connect with, the universe and and get on that same that right frequency but how do you you know how you know what i'm trying to say it's like like how, how do, do i mm, i think i kind of know what you're saying like how do i i i see it as i step out of myself and into okay. your perspective okay and I, it's really okay. easy for me to do i'm very empathic and i'm a cancer rising so i'm very like in touch with the emotional world and um yeah. So basically what I do with my copywriting is I literally like, sometimes I'll physically visualize it, like leaving my body and like being in your perspective. Mm. Okay. And of course you send me details about you, but it's, it's still, I'm using that knowing right. that I have about you. <laughs> and I did a little bit of research onto you and like a little bit of research into your people, of course, mm -hmm. and a little bit mm -hmm. of SEO, but it's mostly that knowing. And so I kind of step into your shoes and think about, and then I step into your customer's shoes, your client's shoes. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is the most yeah. important. Um, what do they need to hear at the very moment that they stumble upon your about page? Right. And then I write exactly what they need to hear. And honestly, I've never really like spoken that out in okay. like, I, I've known it. Again, it's okay. a knowing, but. Yeah, I basically put myself into other people's shoes along the journey. So like mm -hmm. I'm me and then I can be you for a minute and then I can be your client for a minute and write from all those different perspectives. And I think that's what really hits is because yeah. I'm really thinking about the customer, like truly empathetically thinking about what they need versus like, what do I have to say to get them to buy? Like yes. that's not always the goal. Of course we want money, but it's not always the goal. Like sometimes... Right. We just want them to feel seen and held by some sort of content that we posted and awesome if that's the call to action the action that they take after they read your about page right now great maybe down the line that looks like they follow yep. you on linkedin you planted the idea you've you've reached yes. your subconscious and have them thinking about it and associating mm -hmm. creating a neurological association yes to, we planted a seed yeah planted yes. a seed exactly yeah. And the cool thing about that is that's what copywriting does. It's a psychological right. way of writing. It's that right. really left and right brain. Like we, we speak to both so that this person is like very clear on what we have to offer and very clear on how it's going to change their life for the better. 
Yes. We're not pushing in that pain point marketing. We're yes. helping them visualize how their life could change for the better and what that would look like and feel like and taste like and smell like and all the things. Um, but that's the thing that differentiates copywriting from any other content is that aspect. But also we always have some sort of call to action, meaning like, what do we want this person to do after they've read this? And that's always, that should always be present in copywriting. But that, like we said, can be like them feeling something. Yes. Something being like aroused in them, like something yes. like, oh my gosh, I like, I feel seen. And then that could look like, you know, they followed you on your social platforms and then maybe they signed up for your newsletter and it, that seed keeps growing right. and maybe it totally emerges into this beautiful flower in a year. And when it's that flower, right. I mean, they decide to sign up for your $5,000 coaching program and work with you. Yeah, it took a right. year, but yeah, they find you in their timing. And that's where that trust really comes into play is like. I know that I'm writing great content. I'm posting it. Mm -hmm. It feels great. It's aligned with me. This is how I want to speak about this. And then your person is like, ooh, I love this. This is so good. I'm going to follow your journey. And eventually when I'm ready, because right. it's in everybody's own the time. Same, the same frequency and the time yes. and intuition yeah. and everything aligns. Yeah. yeah. And I get that that's scary for any entrepreneurs listening. Like I really do get that that's like, okay, but like I need to put food on the table and pay my bills. And it's like, you always will. Right. But up until that point, do you want to feel stressed about it and work really hard to get a sale? Or do you just want to trust and right. do things that light you up along the way and enjoy the ride and still make that money, if not more, because of the frequency that you had leading up until that point? Yeah. So you get to choose. And it's like, yeah, yeah we live in a very fearful world, a very fearful paradigm i totally yes. understand yes it's deconditioning your brain and understanding that we are still kind of in that masculine way but it's quickly 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 changing and that's not really something you can tangibly like it's not going to happen overnight right um and there's no evidence of it because like i said this hasn't happened in human history our parents never saw this our grandparents never saw this our great great grandparents never saw this they were always in that very lack fear-based yep. paradigm yeah and not to minimize that because it is very real but we are blessed to live in this time where by 2027 we're going to be fully in that transition and earth is yes. going to be at a totally different um frequency which is like so cool it gives me chills so and business is going to look different everything yes. everything is going to look different yes. but you know we're talking about business we're entrepreneurs so i like to bring it i like to reel it back into that topic I, I think like you're talking about the paradigm shift that is happening right now. I yeah. think a lot of this has to do with the programming that we had. I mean, like, remember the infomercials? Yes. You start watching That's it. That's that and you're traditional like, marketing. Vacuum cleaner? No, I don't. But well, look, and then they'd have that timer at the bottom, 800 number. Oh, yeah. And the timer, you only got 20 minutes to make this, but yet they ran it every day. Yeah. For like 10 years. So yes. that same 20 minute clock stayed the same. I know every oh. day but i think it programmed us into this lack state of well yes. i do need a food slicer i do oh, need yeah. a new vacuum cleaner and i think that that set the foundation of sales adi mm -hmm. whatever all the different uh systems that are out there and it's all about like talk about their weakness talk about the solution talk about how you're the only one who can offer them the yeah. solution and it's all this masculine energy i really appreciate and i can tell by just looking at your writing and looking at your website and just having conversations with you it's like you know when you get to that point of where you don't even have to sell it's just this is what you do you're really good at it you have a talent you've yeah. developed its talent over many years and this is what you do so i encourage everybody watching this to really look at your website now because the websites that were updated even six months ago with all the pain point marketing and all the you know are you feeling this and i did that too on the first website too are you feeling this yeah. way are you feeling this way do you want to feel this way and it's like yeah. it just didn't feel natural because that's not how i talk to people mm -hmm. i talk to people as this is what i'm really good at this is what you're really good at let's work together and help each other out like yes it's that, I mean? co, it's that um co-creation and I, yes. I put that actual language on my website um it takes that like heaviness out of it or yeah. 
I don't know, that kind of guilt, like I've been shamed into making this decision and then maybe I don't really want to be here and maybe I didn't really want to buy this. And honestly, those aren't your people you want in your right. in your orbit anyways. Like, right. And frankly, people are so tired of that infomercial car oh, yeah. salesman yeah. vibe. We're yes. so done with that. We are inundated with selling and billboards and ads and all this stuff all day long every single day it's normal now to us but it's not actually normal and i feel people are fed up with it yes. um and i think what else they're fed up with too within that is it's very um there's like a lack of humanness yes like yes and we're it doesn't feel personal at all it doesn't make us feel good it doesn't make us feel seen and it kind of leaves us being like wait what like i don't really vibe with this it's not connecting it's not making me feel any emotions or feel any like visceral sensations um so then when there's people like me and you and sandy and helena woods having these websites that are like very personal and like talking about us a little bit but also yeah. keeping the focus on you and like your differentiation like what makes you different and all of the little things that make you and your business exciting and you that's when people are like, mm, gimme, gimme, because there's such a right. lack of that now. Right. It's like, right. even especially with AI and stuff, even if you don't yes. technically consciously know that something is written with AI, I know that people can feel that. I'm not saying like horrible AI is all bad. It's just like, okay, if I wrote a post versus AI wrote a post, which one do you think is going to convert better? One, 100%. <laughs> I, I've <laughs> done it. People yes, can I've... feel it. I think, I think, I mean, AI is a tool, just like auto tune yes. was a tool yes. uh, when in the, in the music industry, it's been used for years right. before anybody ever heard about it. It was just meant to take a little bit of someone who's off to pitch a little bit and put them on to pitch. It wasn't meant to become the sound that it is today, yeah. but, and I think it's the same thing with entrepreneurs in your business. You can use AI to generate some ideas, but if you really like, let it just create your copy. It's going mm -hmm. to sound like everybody else out there. You're going to, yeah. because it's still a computer. It still has to mm -hmm. look at the old infomercials and take yeah. that type of strategy yeah. and that and that's format. that's exactly format. what it is. Yes. yes. It's exactly what it is. It pulls from already existing content. So it's nothing original or new. Right. It literally cuts and splices other things on the internet and brings it together in something that it thinks sounds good and then spits it out to you. Yes. Um, and it's not fact checked, I will say too. So if you're yeah. like in the legal world or in the medical field, like be really careful with that. Um, <laughs> true, true. Yeah. It's, I'm sounding like I'm a hater of AI, which in well, some way I am, but well, it's just, I do agree with you that it's a tool. Like, you, if you're like, okay, experiencing writer's block and you need to write a sales page or a series of Instagram posts or something, by all means, like use that as like a guideline and then have like something tangibly on paper and then go in and like add your little um, Make it your personality yeah. to it. Yeah. yeah. Like really have fun with it. But to me, giving up the way that you communicate and your messaging to a robot is yes. kind of unfortunate because it's so sacred yeah like if your you voice. think about how important yeah your voice communication and speaking is like you use it every single day and it's just so important and you were given your throat chakra and your voice for a reason because like i think you believe this too everybody has a message to share yes and they have to share it in their way and so when we give it up to this kind of robotic tool, I think it's kind of, it can be lackluster. Um, so in the in the circles that I'm in and the world I'm in within like mm -hmm. new paradigm business, yes. it's not saying like we're shaming people that use AI or whatever, but I think we all kind of understand that that aspect of our business, because our business is also sacred. It's also an aspect of us as sacred yes. beings. Yes. Um, so we really pour a lot of love and intention and thought into it. We yeah. want it to be a reflection of us because that's literally what it is. It's like a verbal or written reflection of us and our message. And so it's kind of a big deal. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting topic that everybody's having. And like, I understand that everybody doesn't have the, um, the love of writing. 
and or don't understand the copywriting side of writing because it's its whole own beast. It's, really it's a whole own niche. Yeah. What people yes. may think it is. Yeah, like totally. Speaking. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So I totally understand that. And I think that's when people come to me when they're like, okay, I'm doing going to delegate this because I understand that it's sacred. And I understand that I want this to be really well written and beautiful because this is my baby. This is my yes. business. And I would like to get it right the first time. And I would like for it to connect and resonate with people so that, yeah, down the line, I'm making money and I'm helping people in whatever way that I do, whatever your offer is. So yeah, it's just an interesting kind of twist um or a different narrative around the writing and the copywriting and the way that you speak about your business so i think every business owner knows though that like having a really beautiful website graphic design yep. and having it yep. well written is like actually so exciting and lights you up if it's like yes. really aligned with you and you're saying things in a way that you want to say it and it's more fun and that okay that is the whole point of new paradigm business is to have fun yes like, let's have fun. Let's play. Yes. This gets to be a beautiful reflection of you. Mm -hmm. Great. So much more yeah. fun than feeling like you have to follow what everybody else on LinkedIn is saying you have to follow to make a million dollars or whatever. That's really not the way that it's working anymore. But I think that's exciting and very freeing. Yeah, I, I equate to this is like being on a carousel and people are just going around the carousel and here comes the brass ring. OK, here we go up. Oh. Damn, I missed it. Okay, well, yeah. get back on the carousel. Yeah. Maybe we'll get it next launch. Maybe we'll get it next year. And it's yes. like, just get off the carousel and start walking on your journey. Find people that are on the same frequency that you're on. Yeah. Connect with you. And mm. you may come across a mountain. You may come across a bridge you have to cross. You may have to yeah. build a raft or something. But, you know, when you find people that you're um, in sync with, then yeah. it just, it's like, okay, we're going on this journey. I don't know where it's together. going together, but let's go have fun and explore yeah. and get off the carousel. And that's, yeah. that's a big part of my yeah. messaging too, is like, just get off this carousel, man. You know yeah, what the, that's the what it's boring. Is the, the brass ring is there the same every year, or every launch. It's never mm -hmm. going away. Forget yeah. about the carousel. And, and yeah. So what is yeah. it that you love most about working with your clients? Mm, honestly, when they send messages like you did about how excited oh. they are with the content and like oh. they're just like flabbergasted at when I deliver the copy and yeah. hearing people light up about that and be like, wow, like this is so me. This is so my voice and just being really excited about it. I love that. That is like why I do what I do. Um, and then, yeah, like help because everybody's so unique. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we are so close to our uniqueness that we can't see it and we can't yes. like eloquently like communicate it written or spoken. Um, and so I can see that from my perspective. I see right. how amazing you are and unique you are. Every person is. And I like implementing that into the copy and being like, own your shit. Like you are amazing. You have an amazing offer. Like step up to the, the high frequency yeah. place and like yes. own your stuff and like be your own authority and like yes. run your business the way you want. And I just think pretty much empowering business owners. Yeah. I because think it's I really, am a copywriter. Sorry, go for it. I, I think it's really important. Sorry. I think it's really important for people to see their business from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. I think we had this with artists. They were too hard on themselves. Yeah. They missed that note. They sang the wrong lyric. No one in the audience knows what yeah. the meat and potatoes, as I say, meat and potatoes is the feeling that people have and you just have such a great way of capturing that feeling and putting it into words. It's, Thank it's just you. incredible. Seriously. I appreciate yeah. that G. I yeah. really do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. So how can people work with you? Yeah. So right now I am just doing copywriting. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have anything in your business that needs a little love or you're feeling stuck, you yep. can go to my website. We'll link it in the show notes. Um, yep. It's just the spiritual copywriter.com. Um, you can send me a message on here. Um, but yeah, that's all I have offering for now. My business is transforming this year yes. into other offers. So yes, we'll see what that looks like. It definitely will be totally different from writing. 
I will still be writing, yeah. but um, I will be have like having more a wide span of offers. So okay. keep on yeah. the lookout for that because that'll be really, really fun. But that's about it. Yeah, I think now is the time for people to look at your website, yeah. look at your LinkedIn about page, look at the posts you're doing and everything. And, and just ask yourself this question, does it align with who you really are? And if it does, yeah. then, then great. Keep keep going. Yeah. But if it doesn't, and you know, I, I use AI too. I'm I, Sandy's on me all the time. You know, it doesn't even sound like <laughs> you. And I'm like, damn it, I know, but I don't know what to You're say. Like, leave me alone. <laughs> give me a camera and a mic, and I can talk to, for anybody to anybody about yes. anything. But when it comes to for me, when it comes to writing, I don't know. I I, I don't know how to put it down into words. I, I can yeah. say it on a camera easier. Yeah. So I invite everybody to. Reach out to Miranda, follow her here on LinkedIn, connect and and look at your, you know, even have that that one on one call with her to get a different perspective. Because I think yeah. we throw this in the music industry all the time. People, artists are too close to their work and they yes. play that song a million times then and they don't have that emotional connection to it anymore. It just they get on autopilot. It happens yeah. with every artist. And mm -hmm. then someone comes in and goes, you know, what really stood out to me about your story and your song is this. And it changes overnight. It changes yes. the artist and how they present and how they connect with their audience. Mm. Yeah, because even if you're in your kind of in your body, doubting yourself a little bit kind of over your offer, there are still a ton of people that are going to be mind blown for what you have yes. to offer and really need that. So, yeah, sometimes you do need a, a different perspective. And I definitely have. I offer that, yeah, in my passion audits. So, so I gotta ask you, who is your favorite rock star? <sighs> oh man, rock star! Why am I drawing a blank? I don't know. <laughs> I have so many. I'm like, does everybody draw a blank on that? <laughs> yeah. Favorite rock star? Damn. And I am I allowed to say Hannah Montana? <laughs> You can say anybody, but Miley, I mean, okay, you got to look at Miley I mean, Cyrus. Miley, look at yeah. that story. I grew up loving her. Hannah Montana was iconic. Yes. So my inner child is like, say Hannah Montana. <laughs> I mean, talk about, you know, a transformation. Talk about, yes. I mean, literally she grew up in front of the public. Yes. And everything. And look I at mean, her like, now. And, and I think, I think she wasn't treated fair a lot of times because yeah. at her age and relationships and different things. And I think that I, I'm, I'm against this uh, whole uh, paparazzi and people being in mm, people's lives, yeah. but yeah, Miley, what, what an incredible, yeah. I mean, and a wrecking yeah. ball. What, what a great, what a great example. Yeah. I mean, she literally just took a wrecking ball to the music industry. Yep. Oh yeah, she did. Just, and if you kind of look at her evolution, it's a kind of great example of what we're talking about, where she kind of followed the traditional, like I have to do this Disney star yes. thing and then was like, fuck that. I'm going to do whatever I want. And yeah, upset people because like I said, we're not for everybody, Right. but let's be real. Everybody loved that. And that was yeah. when she really grew in her yep. stardom. Yep. And now she's just like embodying who she really wants to be. And she's so successful and it looks completely different from how yes. she started, which will always be the case. We're ever evolving. So she actually is a, a great example of that. Yeah, but she, yeah, I'm going to say Miley. She <laughs> yeah. She just doesn't go with the flavor of the week or yes. the month. She's like, if she wants mm -hmm. to do something that people go, well, don't do that. She's like, I don't care. I'll do it. Yeah. And then people love it. it. People love it yeah. because she's being authentic to who she is. Yes. And that's when people are magnetized to you. You don't even have to do anything to get them there. So let's yeah. say you're talking to, I know this sounds like, this will sound like masculine energy, but say you're talking to your ideal client, mm -hmm. your ideal person. What, what, what do you want to say to your, I don't even know how to phrase that because without, see, now I'm very aware of masculine energy. I'm like, okay, how do I get out of that? Yeah. But masculine what, energy isn't bad. Let me say okay, that. That's I get not it, bad. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely need that. We need the masculine container to hold the feminine and flow. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So anyways, finish your question. Are you talking like my ideal client now? What would I say? Yeah. Like you're talking to your ideal client. What do you mm. want to say to your ideal client who's watching? Yeah. If you are feeling like you are stuck in a bubble of, I have to speak like this, or my website has to look like this, or I have to do business this way. And it's feeling mm. very unalive and stagnant. You do not have to follow anybody else's rules. That is why you became an entrepreneur. 
<laughs> and I get it. I get in that rut too, where I'm like, oh, everybody else is doing this and they're getting, they're finding success. I should probably follow that and like play it safe. But really, if you think back to like before you actually started your entrepreneurial journey, you wanted to do things your way. You wanted more yep. time freedom. You wanted the freedom yep. to express yourself in the way that you want without asking a boss's permission. So really just doing things in a way that lights you up every day, every little step of the way and watch the results um, flood in and you'll just be a happier person and your business will thrive and be happy. Um, so yeah, let yourself explore the areas that you want to explore, even if nobody else is doing it, because probably that's the way that the universe wants you to explore it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Wow. You have permission. <laughs> wow. This is this is so great. I'm looking forward to seeing you on more podcasts. Yay. Thank that's you. What I, that's what I see in your in your future is cool. because you have an incredible message. You're you're really great on camera and, and went in the same frequency. And I yeah, think more are. people out there want to hear your story and, yeah. and, and get to know you. So yeah. I hope so. I would love to kind of blow people's minds with the possibilities of this new paradigm because it's, it's it's a fun one. So so if you yeah. have a podcast, get in touch with Miranda and and yeah, this is this is just great. So I want to thank cool. you again for taking time to be on the show. I am I am so excited about everything that we're talking about, all the different projects we're working on in the future. I can't wait. Yes. And Andy says hi. And yes, we're going to be in touch with you this weekend. So cool. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you so thank much. You. All Bye, right. Everybody. Until next time, everybody. Ciao. Cheers. Ciao.